On a stormy night, 11 strangers found themselves trapped in a remote Nevada hotel room. As the night went on, each guest was brutally killed and tortured, causing the remaining survivors to become increasingly confused and suspicious of one another. Meanwhile, Dr. Malcolm Rivers, a mentalist and convicted murderer, desperately attempted to convince judges and police of his supposed mental illness, which he claimed was the cause of his heinous crimes. How do these seemingly unrelated events connect? Who is responsible for the murders of these innocent people? And what is the truth behind it all? Through masterful storytelling and a gripping script, Identity has cemented itself as a riveting detective film that keeps the audience on the edge of their seats until the very end. The film's finale is not only filled with nail-biting suspense, but also contains numerous surprising twists that will leave viewers questioning everything they thought they knew. We will be discussing the true nature of evil within each person. If you have not seen it yet, this is a spoiler alert for all of you. And if you are ready, let us begin. Mancom Reverse's conversation with Malik, his psychotherapist, began with a recording of the crime scene. The images clearly showed the cruelty of the perpetrator. Only 24 hours later, Mancom was scheduled to be executed for his crime. However, that night, Dr. Malik and Mancom's lawyer pleaded with the judge and police to delay the trial. They had evidence that the crime was committed while Mancom was in an unstable mental state. At the same time, in a remote area of Nevada, Ed, a former cop now working as a limousine driver, was driving in the rain. His narrow perspective caused him to accidentally hit a woman on the road. Despite the discomfort expressed by his passenger, Susanna, Ed chose to take responsibility for the victim and her husband. As the super storm approached, people in the nearby area rushed to the cemetery to pray and seek help. The entire area was quickly isolated, and at the home of the owner, Larry Washington, they encountered others who were also stranded, such as Paris, a call girl, and newlyweds Lou and Ginny. However, the situation took a turn when Dr. Quan Rhodes, the person in charge of the investigation into the murder of Robert Maine, arrived to warn everyone. On that fateful night, several people in the group were unexpectedly killed in a series of events full of unsolved mysteries. The first victim was the actress Susanna, whose body was never found after she was killed in a horrific manner. Shortly after, Lou, Guinea's young husband, was also killed in the same location after a heated argument with his new wife. All suspicions fell on a prisoner who had broken out of jail and was on the run. Ed, Roach, and Larry, the owners of the house, went to search for the prisoner, Robert Maine. They managed to locate him and locked him in the warehouse. However, just moments later, Robert was also found dead in a gruesome manner with a burning stick in his mouth. Next to his body, they found a room key with the numbers counting backwards from 10, suggesting that there were a series of murders taking place. If you enjoy horror-themed films, identity is an essential piece of work. It captures the viewer's attention with its continuous cybercrimes that occur within a short period of time. Despite using a judgmental perspective, all the clues lead to a shocking conclusion. Just when we believe the truth has been uncovered, another unexpected twist is revealed, causing all previous predictions to crumble. Even those who have watched many detective films will be caught off guard, as it is not easy to guess the killer without paying close attention. The film has now reached a crucial point where important details about each character's life are being revealed. Ed, for instance, is a former police officer who was forced to resign due to a psychological injury after a failed attempt to rescue a young pregnant girl. Con Paris is a woman who has saved up all her money to return to her hometown and purchase land to start an orange farm, hoping for a peaceful life. The young couple, Lou and Ginny, are in the midst of getting married, but their relationship is strained due to a lie Ginny told about being pregnant. This lie led to a heated argument between them, which may have played a role in Lou's death. However, the biggest suspect in the case is Larry, the owner of the mansion, who is believed to be harmless. He was arrested for embezzling money from Susanna's room and for his alleged involvement in the murder of her daughter. He is currently being held at the hospital. A man was discovered frozen in a large refrigerator. Larry hastily took his car and fled the scene. In the process, he unintentionally killed Rock, who was trying to defend Timmy, a child blocking the road. Larry was overwhelmed with panic. He was known as a habitual drunkard. He had wandered over to the house and found the owner's lifeless body on the table. Not knowing what to do, he placed the body in the refrigerator and threw it at him, as he did not have a bag. Those who were still alive had mixed feelings. 
Paris and Ed believed Larry's story because they thought he was just a coward, not brave enough to cause such a ruckus. This argument made the police officer, Ross, extremely angry. He insisted that Larry was the mastermind. Meanwhile, the shy girl, Ginny, felt that maybe a spiritual force was behind all of this. Despite being in the same room and Larry being blind, Alex's wound and Jimmy's mother were rescued safely. However, only moments later, she passed away while holding the key to room six. The whole group rushed to check on Ross, who was stuck in the car, and found the key to room seven, but no one was near his body. At this point, whether you believe it or not, you have to run. Ginny and Jimmy went to the only working car to make their escape. The bomb had been hidden in the car before it exploded. It was only towards the end that the truth began to surface. Ed Lemur suspected something was amiss when the bodies mysteriously vanished after the car explosion. He checked everyone's ID cards and discovered that they were all named after different states. Curiously, they were all born on May 10th. Eventually, it was revealed that these 11 individuals, including the murderer Malcolm Rivers, had a deep connection with each other. Each one of them embodied a distinct personality of a killer, representing a disorderly psyche on the brink of death. Their encounter was a repetitive cycle of each person being killed, which was part of Dr. Malik's method for repressing the most dangerous personality. This ultimately led to Malcolm's death and exposed the truth for Ed to find a way to eliminate it. Unbeknownst to him, Ed himself was one of Malcolm's good personalities and was summoned by Dr. Malik on that fateful night to assist in their plan. Ed searched tirelessly for the villain, only to come face to face with him in the mirror. Finally accepting the truth, he returned to Malcolm's mind, where only Rose, Paris, and Larry remained. It was then that Paris discovered Rose's true nature. She was also a criminal, just like Robert. Together, they had killed a corrupt cop and were now on the run. This explained Rose's frequent anger and lack of experience during their police mission, compared to Ed. In a fit of rage, Larry and Paris attempted to attack Rose, but she quickly shut down Larry's network and shot him in the chest. Just in time, Ed returned and saved Paris, but not without sustaining serious injuries himself. Before leaving, Ed expressed his hope that Paris would have a happy life as he had always wished for her. In the end, Dr. Malik was able to convince the judge to allow Malcolm to continue his psychological treatment, and he believed that the evil personality had been completely destroyed. In Malcolm, there is now only the presence of a girl named Paris, who radiates a love for life and kindness. Like Paris, Malcolm has left behind her sorrowful past to come back to her hometown and start a fresh chapter. But the glimmer of hope is overshadowed by guilt as Paris fulfills Edward's dying wish. I saw you on the orange grass. Everything seemed to be over, but like a speeding train coming to a sudden stop, the screenplay continued to drift, leaving the viewer with only death. The story shifts between a picturesque farm, the bustling city of Paris, and the quiet countryside, all leading to the discovery of a key number one. However, the truth is that Timmy is a cold-blooded killer. While the film itself is not bad, Timmy has been lurking in the shadows, committing multiple murders before meeting his own demise. After taking many risks, Paris ultimately faced the same fate as nine other victims who had received the death penalty. Moncom was unable to overcome the evil within himself. The murderer within him, Timmy, had discovered the valuable golden orange orchard. Horses do not get a second chance, as Timmy used to say before she met Paris. Timmy was a prostitute, coincidentally sharing the same identity as Mancom's mother who had been haunting him since his childhood. This, this trauma was something that could never be erased. Why is Jimmy considered the worst personality, rather than the two known criminals, Rose or Robert, or any other adults? Besides the unexpected surprise, is there a hidden meaning behind his actions? To understand the reasons, we must examine the smallest details from the beginning of the film. Through the articles collected by Dr. Malik, we can piece together Mancom's past. The girl's childhood was filled with dark and gloomy days. Mancom's mother worked as a call girl, while his father was an alcoholic. Whenever his mother was occupied with guests, he would be locked in the bathroom. And when he was with his father, he constantly had to avoid arguments. The memory of a particular night where his father was severely injured left a terrifying imprint on Mancom's mind. As he grew up, Mancom committed the heinous crime of murdering people in a wheelchair. Doctor, Malik's journey to unravel Mancom's complex thoughts is also an attempt to erase his painful past. The discussion on various personalities, age, gender, kindness, and evil has provided a profound understanding of the complex identities of individuals. 
Aside from Jimmy, the other characters also serve as representations of those who exist in the real world of Mancom. Larry embodies a drunk father who harbors a dislike towards girls. Paris has a job and takes care of his mother. The newlyweds, Jock and his family, depict Mancom's yearning for love. However, these two groups must confront insurmountable challenges. Lou and Ginny's relationship is strained, but they are not afraid to face potential breakups and misunderstandings. Jock's family may have played a role in shaping him into a troublesome European. Surprisingly, Alex, Jimmy's mother-in-law, does not make an appearance throughout the film, almost as if denying her presence in Mancom's life. Malcolm used to dream of being as talented, calm, and kind as Edward. He longed for a peaceful country life like Paris. However, his financial struggles prevented him from achieving his dreams. Growing up in a toxic environment, Malcolm was subjected to abuse and psychological trauma, which distorted his personality and made him resistant to change. Even when Dr. Malik attempted to use treatment methods to rid him of his negative traits, everyone believed that Rose, the villain, had been eliminated. While Malcolm's soul was cleansed of sin, it also became clear that there was no hope for his salvation, as his soul had been destroyed in his childhood. The story of 11 people follows the familiar plot of a horror film. In the midst of a storm, with loud music and an empty house in a desolate area, a killer lurks in the shadows. It is a common motif in horror movies, yet this simple story proves to be incredibly effective. Two separate narratives unfold simultaneously, with no clear indication of how they are connected. According to critic Leo Noboru Lima, the first major twist in the film, which many of us may have already suspected, is that the deaths in the retirement home do not occur in the real world. They are simply a manifestation of Mancom's mental anguish. This turning point was carefully crafted by the director from the beginning, evident in details such as the numbered key. As the investigation into the victim's death unfolded, it was revealed that each person in the hotel was named after a small state in the United States. In the middle of the film, it was also discovered that Malcolm suffered from a dissociative identity disorder. However, there was no indication that Timmy was the real mastermind behind the murder. This twist in the plot left a strong impact on the audience, especially with the unexpected ending. The director skillfully kept the audience guessing until the end, making the first flashback seem like a false sense of understanding. The entire film can be interpreted as a metaphor for the inner conflict within Malcolm's multiple personalities, with him ultimately battling against his own fate. With a small cast of only 15 people, the film was executed excellently. Each character was convincing in their portrayal, with their personal motives driving their actions. Ed, for instance, is a police officer who is tormented by his inability to save a young girl. Throughout the film, his dedication to saving others serves as a form of redemption for his past mistakes. That's why he placed the final bet in Paris, the one who was presented with the opportunity to make a comeback. The strange story of how Larry became a homeowner, or the criminal journey of the notorious Rose, are both compelling enough to create an interesting narrative. Hidden behind the nightmares of a multiple personality disorder is a story that prompts reflection on the nature of evil within each individual. Personality is not solely based on instinct, but is greatly influenced by one's upbringing and environment. Traumatic memories can deeply affect a child, like the talons of evil filled with maggots, causing their soul to be constantly wounded and bruised. As a result, even as they grow older, the child cannot shake off the influence of their evil past and remain stubbornly controlled by it. May the force be with you. I am going to make him an author once more. Play as time goes by. See you later, baby. <laughs>